Welcome to my OSCP guide to pivoting. I know this is a topic that a lot of you guys have requested and I've been wanting to make this for a while. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to focus on a specific case of pivoting that is not covered in the PDF. So if you are enrolled in the uh, in the PWK, the PDF will show you guys how to use you know SSH and I think it might cover a couple other tools as well in order to do pivoting. Now, the thing about the SSH style of pivoting is obviously it requires you to have SSH access through the target. Now, that's not always something that you're going to have, right? You may have exploited a web server and gotten code execution and you don't know the credentials of the user account. And, you know, maybe it doesn't even have an SSH server running, you know? So in that case, you're not going to be able to use that pivoting technique. But what I'm going to show you in this video is one that you can use at any time, at any point, regardless of whether you're dealing with a Linux machine, a Windows machine, whether SSH is enabled or not enabled, it doesn't matter. You're going to be able to use this technique. This is actually, in many cases, my preferred way of doing the pivoting, and that is using a tool called Chisel. There's eventually going to come a point in time where you're going to be ready to interview for jobs. And definitely at that point, you're going to want to be armed with the top 10 questions that you need to know to ace a cybersecurity pen testing interview. So check out the description below and you'll find very detailed answers to all these top 10 interview questions and some additional resources to take it one step further. Now, in order to demo this, I've actually set up a, an entire lab environment for you guys. So I have my Kali machine here and my IP address is this one here, this 222.131. I have a Windows target. Now, we're going to imagine that this is maybe some kind of web server or some kind of application that would be intended to be accessed by users outside the internal network. So this one has two IP addresses. This is a dual-homed system, what we would call. This one has 192.168.222.130, and uh, that is the IP address that we're going to use to connect to it from Kali. But we also see here it has this 10 dot address. Now this is a different network. We're gonna imagine this is an internal network. And this machine here is domain joined. It's joined to an active directory domain. And this here is the domain controller. Now looking at the IP address here, we see that it has that 10 dot address, but it does not have that 192 address. So this is a machine that we have, we're not able to access from our Kali machine. So for example, um, this is that is a domain controller, right? So it should be running port uh, 88, that's Kerberos, right? So if we try to run a scan on port 88, like this, we should be able to, to hit it, but we can't, right? Because we can't actually reach that server. Actually, if we take away the TAC PN, it should say that the host is down and, you know, if we just try to do a simple ping, for example, on that server, we won't be able to do that because, quite simply, we cannot reach that machine. Now, because this one's dual-homed, we can reach it from this machine, right? So if I try to ping it from here, we see the reply come in. So this is going to require pivoting. If we want to be able to take over this domain controller from where we're at on our Kali machine on the outs outside of the network, right? We can, if we can compromise this dual homed machine and gain code execution through the context of this machine, then we can use this machine as a pivot into the internal network. So really quick, just to, you know, for the visual people out there, let's just draw this up really quick what we're doing, right? So we got three machines, right? So. And this one here will say this is the domain controller. This is our Kali machine. And then we also have this, we'll just call it a Windows server, right? And I'll just draw this line here. So... Windows server. And uh, this here is the internal network. Right? 
So this right here, this is the network boundary. And because this is inside the network boundary and we're outside of that boundary, we cannot directly access the domain controller. But this Windows server, it's dual homed, right? So it has a network interface that's both on this network out here and this internal network. So if we can compromise it, then we can use it as a pivot into the internal network. And if there were some other servers inside this internal network as well, we could access them also using this server as a pivot. So hopefully that makes sense visually for everyone. So just to make this a little more streamlined, let's assume we've already taken over this server. We've gotten code execution on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna upload a netcat binary to, uh, to do this pretty quickly. And let me make this larger for you guys here as well. So we'll take this one here. Uh, let's just CD into opt privesque windows. And I'm gonna use an SMB, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna just use a Python web server, make it simple enough here. And let me just grab my IP address really quick as well. And I'll just do a quick file transfer to get the netcat binary on the target system. So let's see what's here. And uh, we're basically in our in our home directory, which is perfect. So we can just download it straight here. So we'll do cert util URL cache, uh, split F HTTP, my Kali machine, and then netcat.exe. And now we have it here. So to spawn a shell, first let's start our listener so we can catch this reverse shell back. So we'll just run netcat LVMP. We'll listen on 443. And now if we come over here, we will tell it uh, the IP address 443 and we'll say tack ecmd.exe. And now if we come back here, we see that we have a reverse shell as uh, the Elevate user, or the self-made user, rather, on the Elevate domain. So if we were to run an IP config, we'll see this, we'll confirm, you know, this is a dual home system. And we can reach the domain controller from here, right? Which was the 100 address. So basically what we're gonna wanna do is use this system as a proxy. So the next thing we wanna transfer is the chisel.exe file, right? Now, the way you can get this, if you don't have this already, let me just show you real quick. So if we just Google for a chisel GitHub, we can find it here. And this is what you'll need to do first because it's not on Kali Linux by default. So if we just come here, what you're going to want to do is once you get to this page, is just go over here to where it says releases. And there's a bunch of different ones depending on your system, right? So what I would prefer to do, if this is your first time installing this, install Linux 32-bit, which is this one here, and then this Linux AMD 64. Um, so not Darwin, not ARM either. So these specifically these two right here, okay? And then for Windows, you're going to want to install the Windows 386 is the 32-bit one. And just in case you have to run this against a 32-bit system in the future, right? And then the 64-bit Windows version. Um, I can tell you, I mean, there's a PowerShell command you can run to determine whether it's 32 or 64-bit, but I'll just tell you right now, this is a 64-bit Windows machine here. So we're gonna use this 64-bit one. I've already installed them on my system and unzip them and everything. But I was just showing you guys, that's how you would get it if you don't have it already. But if we go into opt uh, chisel, I think is where I put it, and windows, uh, there's a couple things we're gonna need to do. So first let's transfer the windows one and the 64-bit the version. So now I'll just go ahead and start up my web server, Python web server once again, and I'll come back to that. I can just do this through the reverse shell here. 
And uh, so the reason I was typing this in before was imagine that instead of just because you wouldn't have command line access beforehand, right? This would be like your exploit. It would include something like this to upload Netcat and do this or maybe however you got your shell, right? Maybe it was with Nishang uh, or, you know, maybe you use like um, MSF Venom generated executable payload. However you get your command execution, you're going to have it connect back to your Netcat listener or whatever listener you're using. And then you'll have code execution. Next thing you do is you just run sort util URL cache. You can also do the PowerShell way of transferring it. It's really up to you, entirely up to you. So this time we'll transfer chisel.exe. And there we see we have it successfully over here transferred. And there's a couple things we're going to need to do. So first, let's just go ahead and go to, let me kill this, kill this, and clear this out. Now, I want to go back a couple directories. I'm going to go to Linux because I'm on Kali Linux right now, right? So Linux 64-bit, I have this chisel.exe file here, okay? This is what I'm going to run as my chisel server. So the way we can do that is just with, um, we got to make it executable, which it's green. You see, I already did that. But essentially, we just run chisel server. Tell it to use port 8000 in reverse mode. And the server keyword here, that's what tells it to run as a chisel server. Because for chisel, you need a chisel server and a chisel client, right? Kind of like with the SSH method, you use SSH client, SSH server, right? So it's a client server kind of method here. Now, um, since this is running, we're going to run the client now and connect to our chisel server. Okay, so now if I run chisel client, pass it my IP address, and we're going to put 8,000 here because remember our server, our chisel server is listening on port 8,000, so we need to instruct it to use that in this case. And then we'll say to run it as a SOX proxy or use the SOX proxy on the uh, remote forward to SOX proxy, basically. That way it forwards it through that SOX proxy and that allows us to reach the domain controller. So this is what you're looking to see here is connected. If, it, if you see that, then you know that you're good to go. Um, and you see here this session here established. Um, another thing you're gonna want to do that I've already done, but I'll show you, is you wanna modify a file called Etsy proxychains.com, uh, pro proxychains4.conf. And uh, that's what it is by default on Kali Linux if you're using Kali. And by default, this line here is enabled and this line doesn't exist. So I commented out SOX4 because I want to use the SOX5 proxy and I'm going to use port 1080 on my local host. So with that established, now what we can do is all we need to do is if we want to use this SOX proxy, um, you know, through Chisel and the SOX proxy, we just need to use proxy chains. We prepend that to any command we want to run. So if we do that and we try, um, let's just try an nmap command. So nmap st. Now, by the way, the regular nmap doesn't work. Uh, the stealth scan doesn't work. So you want to do a full TCP connect scan. So you want to do a dash st flag here. And then we'll say port 88 and we'll speed things up with uh, these flags here. And let's try to reach 100, the domain controller, which we couldn't reach before. And boom, now we're able to reach it. And as you see here, it is open. Now, a word of caution here, if you're trying to do like a port scan, it is very slow if you're... So if I tried to scan like all the, even just the standard ports, it's gonna take a really long time, as you can see here. Um, it's trying each one and seeing if it can connect or not, I found 445. This is going to take forever to run. So the what the way I prefer to run this, actually, is to specify, uh, say, like, top ports 10 or 100 or, you know, then you can just increase the number from there as needed. But if I just scan, like, the top 10 ports, we can see immediately which top ports are open, which should give us a better idea of what it is. But, of course... 
if you do see that 88 is open, then most likely it is a domain controller. And in this case, that is true, right? So we see this here, 139 and uh, 445. And if we scan more ports, we would see even more stuff. So of course, if we want to use another tool on this, we could do that as well. Now, the nice thing about a SOX proxy is I specified this address here, the dot one hundred. Say there was another server on dot fifty, I could just do that. Whereas if I was using like um, one of the, uh, like if I was using a different type of forward, then you know, like for example, if I reached it by accessing localhost port eight thousand or something like that to reach the domain controller, then I would only be able to reach whatever server that I'm targeting with that forward. But because I'm using a SOX proxy here. I can access anything on this internal network basically without having to modify a bunch of commands. So if there were like a .50, .51, .52, et cetera, I'd be able to reach that straight from this configuration here. I wouldn't have to do any additional port forwarding or uh, any additional forwards. So I'd just be good to go here. And so if I wanted to use another tool as well, I could do that. So say I want to use crack map exec and I want to run that in SMB mode against the domain controller. And I want to look for uh, like a guest account or something like that. Let's just say, just to demo this. And here you go. You see the information come back. Here is the name of the computer. It's a uh, Windows 10. This is the build, 64 bit. Uh, it's part of the elevate.local domain. SMB signing is required, uh, and SMB version one is uh, prevented, disabled. You're not allowed to use that. And uh, the guest account happens to be disabled in this case. But yeah, any any of these open ports I want to interact with, I can. All I have to do is put proxy chains in front of the command. So this is an easy way to pivot. Um, definitely one of my favorite ways. Uh, let me know if uh, there's any questions you guys have, anything more you want to learn on this stuff and uh, we can address that in future videos as well so yeah hopefully this one helped you and if you want to get into some more technical content i have that on the screen for you right now i'll see you guys right over in those videos thanks for watching